Welcome to the Red Bay Tiger Football Coaches Show with Head Coach Heath Childers and your host, Jack Ivey. Hello again and welcome into the Red Bay High School Football Coaches Show. Jack Ivey along with Coach Heath Childers. He'll be joining me in just a minute. And of course, we're going to be talking about that uh, tough loss to Falkwell Friday night, 28 to 6. And of course, we'll talk to Coach about that. And of course, our missed opportunities getting in the red zone. You got to score when you get in there. And the Coach and I will talk about that. But our yardage was down, even though we still had 190 yards total offense. Uh, Tigers have really spoiled us this year getting up in that 400 range of yards of rushing, but uh, we ended up with 190 yards rushing, about 213 for the game. Once again, a tough loss, Red Bay 28 to six over at Falkville. We hadn't been there since uh, 2003 and a return trip this year. We've got, uh, of course, the Tanner Rattlers coming to town in a big region game coming up Friday night. We're gonna bring in the head coach and he's here on a Monday morning. Coach, good to see you. Good to see you, Jack. Coach, uh, uh, you know, I always kid you about smiling on Monday mornings, but uh, you look back Friday night, tough losses. We had opportunities to get down there, but uh, you got to somehow or another be able to get in the end zone to uh, win the ball game, right? Yeah, you can't, uh, you know, you can't get in the red zone or inside the 10 three times and come away with six points, and that's, that's exactly what happens. So uh, usually nothing good is going to happen. Coach, uh, the ball club from Falkville, uh, uh, they ended up winning the ball game 28-6, got a score late and stuff. like. Did they show us anything that we didn't know or just we just didn't execute inside uh, the 10? Well, I mean, we didn't execute inside the 10, but they, uh, they completely changed their defense. Uh, and they continue to change it throughout the game, and they have not changed. Not They not moved one person out of a, the same spot they'd had in game one until Friday night. And uh, we just, you know, they, they – played a bunch of defensive fronts that we wasn't ready for it. We hadn't seen and so uh, kudos to them. They tricked us and uh, they got the win and uh, we'll move forward. This is a pretty competitive region this year. It's a lot of folks beating up on each other because mm -hmm. uh, I don't know exactly who all, I know Falk will uh, beat Hatton, but did they lose to Tanner? They lost win? to Tanner. So if you look at the records, you think, well, uh, it's kind of it's kind of mixed up this year and uh, there's going to be somebody left out of the uh, postseason because this is not one of those years where you got everybody uh, uh, spread out. I mean, you got a lot of, a lot of folks that are kind of even as far mm -hmm. as wins and losses. Well, I mean, you got Lexton and then everybody else. Right. So uh, that's how the region's shaping up. Coach, we've got a few highlights. I don't have quite as many this week as we uh, normally have, but we're going to go to those highlights over in Falkville, Alabama Friday night and the Red Bay Tigers. Uh, let's look at the captains uh, for the game. Uh, it's number five, Kyler Watson, uh, 66, John Schatz, and 17, Cody Corns. You're watching, of course, the Red Bay High School Football Coaches Show, brought to you by Congressman Robert Idaho. Also, John Cook, your Alpha Insurance agent, that also brings us our instant replays and also Community Spirit Bank. Mr. Brad Bolton and the staff, of course, they take care of our first downs. Coach, uh, we did something a little bit different. We deferred. Uh, yes, we did. We did. You know, uh, wanted to get the defense out there first. Knew it was more than likely it was going to be a close game. We wanted the ball coming out after half. And, and you know, everything kind of went as planned. It was a one-score game. Right. We got the ball out coming out at half. And a uh, few penalties we weren't able to cash in and score. It was a pretty good crowd for a pretty good trip over to Fox for Friday night. So uh, I think uh, their coach asked me, what about y'all traveling? And I said, well, we traveled really good. The Tigers, thank you for coming to the game Friday night. Falkville, Alabama, just outside of Hartsville there. Coach, I'll let you tell me what's going on here. That was jet sweep right there. Uh, we, we we got it forced back in, and uh, you know, some backers and safeties didn't fit like they should have. So they got a good game, and right there, you know, it's Kyler Watson stepping up, making a stick there to line of scrimmage. You know, we you know we knew that they was gonna have try to attack us with a quick passing game, so we were ready for that. <clears throat> That's just a little, that's power O. Uh, we fit it up wrong. And that's usually what goes wrong in a run game when people get big, big runs. Somebody right. doesn't fit right. Look at that on the Alpha Insurance replay. 
a lot of white church there, but uh, you know, uh, it's always helps. It's always helps the other team's passing game when a quarterback can run three yards past the line of scrimmage and still be able to throw the ball. You know that that, that happened continually oh, Friday night. Uh, they call it here, then they wave it off. I'll show you right here. I'm, I mean, so uh, you know. That's not the reason why we lost, but you know the officials they got to do a better job. I mean, the, the guys passed the line of scrimmage, and he did it three or four more times, oh, yeah. and they never called it. So, that's, you know, it's aggravating. Let's just say the line of scrimmage. You watch him; he goes over it right there. He's he's the over the, the ball was on the twenty six. He's on the twenty four when he right. throws. I mean, Stevie Wonder could have saw that, Jack. Right. And of course, the kickoff here. I don't know why. The, if you see it, you see it, but it, then it gets waved off, right? I guess the other officials talking well, the, about it. Well, the, the next three times, they just acted like they didn't even see it. Right, it didn't even get called on mm -hmm. it. <clears throat> you know, uh, Falk will come out in a, a traditional goal line defense when they had been a stack the whole year. Uh, so that, that, was, that was something different for us. And we, you know, once we finally made the adjustments to it, they, they changed their front again, and they eventually end up in their original defense. So, you know. You know, that was an influence trap there. Uh, the guards pulled opposite of each other, and the linebackers and D-line followed them, so. Coach, our running game, it's been awesome all year, and uh, I don't think you can complain about 190 yards rushing in a game, right? Even though even though we didn't win the ball game, you'd, you'd probably take 190 yards rushing. Uh, you know, that, that's not a bad night. You know, we uh, we should have been better. We could have been better. Right. Uh, but we wasn't, and, you know, every game up to this game, we'd made some big plays in the passing game, and, and, and Friday night we didn't. Once again, the Red Bay High School Football Co Coaches Show. Jack Ivey along with Coach Heath Childers. And yeah, we, we threw, Heath thought it was tripped up there. Yeah, well, I mean, we threw a little three-step slant. I mean, had an opportunity to catch the ball. Probably should have went with the arrow route instead. But, uh, you know, that was a good ball there. Give her guy a chance to, to make a play and uh, forced him into making a pass interference. You know, that was a, that was, they changed their front there on the goal line. They went from a goal line to a bear and, uh, you know, we missed a block and the guy got in the backfield and disrupted the handoff. You know, if we make the, if we make her block, don't bust that assignment, we probably score on this play because it's a trap. You see, we got the trap there. Uh, so. That's one of our opportunities we missed inside the 10 as uh, we turn it over to the Blue Devils and uh, so take it deep. Instead of tying the ball game up, we go down two touchdowns. This little jailbreak screen. That young man hurt us all night there on both sides of the ball, didn't he? 33. He did. He had a good game. Like you said, instead of being tied up, we're down a couple of touchdowns here early. Be sure and watch the replay of the game. Of course, we got it on YouTube. You can go back and watch it on Facebook as well. We had like tons of folks watching. Uh, Friday night, uh, but I promise you we'd rather you be at the game and of course you'll have that opportunity to come out and support the Tigers Friday night as the Tanner Rattlers will be coming to town. You can see the score there being adjusted there. It's 14 to nothing and uh, they'll kick off to the Tigers. 
Yeah, we got to do a better job of blocking on kick return. We didn't do a very good job of that Friday night. Coach, we're going to, I guess, move to the second quarter here. That was a good fourth down conversion there. This is an important drive right here, already down two touchdowns. It, it really was. I thought we did a good job of responding, putting a drive together, and, you know, getting down there and, and scoring and, you know, setting us, setting ourselves up to maybe tie the game coming out after half. We come up a little bit short here. They, Keith thought we was going to be in the end zone there, but. And we do get in the end zone for the touchdown. So Tigers make it a 14-6 ball game. And going for the conversion here in just a minute. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's hard to catch a pass when they're, when when the DB's a hold of you. I mean, that's you know, it's probably still had an opportunity to catch it, but you know, it gets a little harder when the uh, when they're a hold of you. Red Bay Tiger marching band uh, performed me at halftime, and of course we're going to have a uh, we're going to talk about our coaching staff here in just a little bit as we get ready for the second part of the coaches show. Well, we got uh, mainly the highlights there in the first half, and of course that, uh, we didn't score any uh, in the second half uh, as we ended up uh, losing the ball game. Once again, the final score was 28-6. We'll look at stats here in just a minute, but. Once again, a uh, good job by the Red Bay Tiger marching band performing Friday night and also the cheerleaders. And once again, thanks to all you fans that uh, made it the game. And of course, you can see the thoughtful Blue Devils are excited there as the final ticker goes down to zero. And they win the ball game once again, 28 to six over the Red Bay Tigers. We'll take her back in here. And Coach, I'm gonna look at uh, some of the stats in the game rushing for the Red Bay Tigers, uh, Brady Harden. Carried the ball 29 times, 177 yards. He had one touchdown. Keaton Lamphere had three rushes for 16 yards. Uh, Corns ha uh, had a carry, Edgman had a carry, and Vincent had a carry. And uh, not much yardage there. 35 total for 190 yards. Holden Inman, a couple of catches for 23 yards. Total offense, 213. Four turnovers in the ball game, Coach. Uh, I know that uh, to go along with not being able to score in the red zone kind of hurt out. Had uh, we have normally in the eight penalty range, and of course, uh, Will West had the interception as the Tigers uh, losing the ball club to uh, Falkville. Uh, also, Will West uh, leading the uh, Tigers in uh, tackles. So he had 10, looks like Ferris had six, Vincent six, Jack West had six, and Watson had three in the ball game Friday night. So, Coach, uh, let's finish uh, up with Falkful and uh, your final thoughts on the game before we talk about our coaching staff and also upcoming opponent Friday night. You know, we just, we didn't get the job done. You know, Falkful beat us and that's that's about all you can say about that. But, uh, I want to say thanks to the uh, Falkful head coach, uh, Coach Ward, for helping us out, uh, getting our spot. And we had an awesome place to broadcast and uh, so thank you, Coach. We appreciate you very much. And uh, appreciate all you folks, uh, once again, that came to the game Friday night. Coach, uh, a lot of folks, uh, we talk about the games, we talk about the players and all that stuff. And uh, there's a lot of hard work goes on even before the players even show up. Let's talk about your coaching staff a little bit. And uh, you might give us the life history of most of them. Who, who you have on the staff this year, helping you out, and tell us a little bit about them. Well, you know, we're strength coach and defensive line coaches. Joe Boyd, you know, he grew up and played here at Red Bay. Stump man. Yes, uh, you know, he he was at West Alabama a couple of years ago as strength coach, and then he was at Haleville, and we were fortunate enough to get him over on board with us. Uh, what's, he, what's he brought to the Tigers? 
Well, you know, he brings a lot of energy and enthusiasm. You know, uh, he's, he's a hard worker. You know, uh, he does a great job in the weight room, and, and the kids really like him. So uh, that young age, and, of course, he, he's been there with them, and he knows, and, uh, of course, I remember him playing, us broadcasting uh, Coach Boyd's games and stuff, and uh, he loves it, and I like to say he loves the kids and uh, mm -hmm. makes it fun for the kids as well, plus they're uh, getting stronger out there, and, you know, you got to be uh, – you got to be strong to be able to get some wins too, right? Yeah, you do. You so do. once again, Joe's the board. Who else we got? We got Joe Boyd. We got Taylor Hamilton. You know, he's been on the staff for a while. Uh, you know, he's from Russellville. He does a great job. Uh, you know, helping and and does a great job on Friday nights, helping spot defenses and things of that nature. Then we got Jason Benson. You know, another. Red Bay guy, born, raised here, played football, had a great career. Jamie Purser, you know, uh, you know, another guy from Red Bay ended up playing some college football and doing a good job. Uh, Adam Hester, uh, you know, from Red Bay, you know, went to school here, played here. He does a great job. And then, you know, you've got Kelby Hallmark. You know, he's from Tharp Town. He helps and works with the quarterbacks and, uh, you know, just real fortunate to have him with us. Who is, uh, if you considered it an offensive coordinator, who would be the offensive coordinator? Uh, you know, I do you have do you I, have coordinators, or y'all just have different responsibilities? We like? usually have different responsibilities. You know, I call the plays on Friday night, uh, good or bad. You know, I was I was calling them when we were scoring fifty, and I called them Friday night when we scored six. Uh, defensively, you know, it's a collective group effort for the most part, but. Uh, you know, as far as blitzing and stuff like that during the game, and you know, we let Purser do that. So the Purser man's responsibilities is what on the defensive mainly, or yes, and yes, like that, so. yes, he, and he does a good job. So, Coach, uh, on Friday nights, uh, uh, you'll notice this sometimes. You go out of town or whatever stuff like that. You got you got people in the press box mm -hmm. doing work. You got folks on the field doing work. You got the chain gangs and whatever it was the other night, and they was trying to get folks to run the chain gang. You know, it, uh, it takes a lot of people to make it, it work on Friday night. And, it really uh, does. But uh, so you got to give hats off to all these. And of course, uh, putting it together Friday night. Of course, we got a brand new principal this year, the world famous Mr. Nanny. And uh, we appreciate him. And uh, what has he brought to Red Bay? Not putting you on the spot. Uh, he, I know he's very supportive. of. He's uh, extremely program. supportive of the athletic program. Uh, and, you know, anytime we need anything or or, you know, I mean, just if we need something, he's there. And, and he helps us any way he can. You know, something else I've noticed about him, he's at the games. Uh, you, you'll see him out there at one of them long volleyball matches after he's gone all day or stuff like that. Sometimes he looks like me after a volleyball match. He's ready to go home. He's tired and all that stuff. But uh, these uh, uh, principals and stuff like that, you know, they want to be there supporting not only the school but the town. but. You know, something else on Friday nights a lot of other folks take for granted if you had not got a kid playing is uh, uh, feeding the team before the ball game, uh, feeding the team after the ball game. I know when I was leaving Falkville, uh, I saw the, you know, the folks uh, eating after the game. You've got to get these guys a little food in them. So uh, who, who kind of heads all that up? Well, the, uh, you know, as far as before the game and after the game, the quarterback club, for the most part does that and there's a lot of different people that helps out with that and on Wednesdays the the moms the team moms they feed the players so uh, they're responsible for that and you know Jason Vincent of course the pregame meal you know he, he he does a good job helping us out with that so you know just a lot of different people involved so you're talking about on a Friday uh, it just didn't happen by itself and stuff, it right? does not Coach, uh, I look back, uh, I've been doing the Red Bay games uh, since 2021, mm -hmm. and not 2000, 2001, that's mm -hmm. a little bit longer and stuff. I actually did a, Red, a few Red Bay games before then, but as far as actually on television since 2001, and um, the Tanner Rattlers have been a thorn, and the Red Bay Tigers, I don't care what sport it is, they're hard to beat in anything that we play them. They've put us out of playoff games and all sports and whatever, and uh, what, and I know we've we've got a win over them recently, but uh, what do we got to do to get this uh, big win Friday night? Uh, they're not going they're not going to roll in here, even though their record's not what we used to remember Tanner as being. So they're not going to be easy, are they? No, they're not. Uh, I think they're 500. They're four and four. Uh, they've played a pretty tough schedule, especially non-region. Uh, you know, 
we're going to have to play better than we did Friday night. I mean, that, that's the recipe. Uh, cut the turnovers out, finish drives, and limit the penalties. What kind of offense do they bring to the table? Uh, you know, they, they like to run a lot of empty sets. They like to spread it out and throw it around. So they've got some dangerous receivers, and their quarterback's pretty good. So A lot of speed. A lot of speed. Defensive, uh, what are they going to do to try to stop this uh, Tiger run attack? I have no idea. You know, they, they, they like to get in multiple fronts. Uh, we you, may have to have some surprises for them Friday night. Well, right? you know, they based out of an odd front most of the season, but uh, Faultful was in the stack, and uh, so and they completely got out of that. Coach, uh, we got a course, like I say, uh, some other games coming up. Uh, this one right here is the next on the schedule, so that's the most important game. And, of course, we appreciate uh, Congressman Robert Adderholt, of course, for making the Coaches Show possible today, and also Mr. John Cook at Alpha Insurance and also – Community Spirit Bank. Uh, any more uh, things you want to talk to the Tiger fans? Tell them to get ready for Friday night. We need them there, don't we? Well, yeah, the more support, the better. Sounds good. Coach, I appreciate you. And, All right, uh, appreciate it, What about it, Jack. breakfast Saturday morning, Bill Ray Fiji? I wasn't able to get to breakfast Saturday morning. Uh, thought it was a long drive. It was a late night, so, you know, had to, had to take a rain check on breakfast. So you didn't even eat Saturday morning? Uh, no. I need to talk to Billy Ray. He, at least he could have went to Hardy's and brought you something back to the house. You think you? he could would have, but he didn't. I so. mean, since you was tired and all that stuff. So Billy Ray Childers, that's uh, Coach's dad. Uh, make sure if it's a road game that he's got some breakfast on Saturday morning. They've been going to Hardy's or mom, your mom yeah. fixing it, but you've let her have the last couple of weeks off and went to Hardy's. But uh, but uh, Billy Ray, make sure the young boy here's got some got some food. That'd be nice of Sounds him. Sounds good. Appreciate all you folks that are watching. Make sure you share this uh, Coach's Show with your friends out there. And, of course, we tell, uh, hear from folks all the time say, we really enjoy the Coach Show. I run into several folks at Fawful say, hey, we enjoy watching your station. Uh, we even watch the Coach's Show. So you never know uh, who's watching out there. So make sure you share this. Of course, we'll have it up on YouTube uh, as well as Facebook as well. And, of course, make sure you replay all the games. We had over, Coach, you ready for this? Uh, over 2.5 thousand watching just on Facebook. That's pretty awesome. So thank you for watching. And uh, we're going to get out of here for the Coach's Show. For Keith on the controls and Coach Heath Childers, I'm Jack Ivey. And thank you for joining us. And we'll see you Friday night. Red Bay Tigers taking on the Rattlers from Tanner. Y'all have a great day. You've been watching the Red Bay Tigers Coaches Show with head coach Heath Childers and your host, Jack Ivey.